In this chapter, we're going to see how to use some important workflow tools and look at live applications. Specifically, we'll look at how to use the control room to set up separate mixes for your monitors and for each set of headphones, how to set up and use the talkback and listen features of the control room, how to configure buses, tracks, mixes, and plugins to accommodate 5.1 surround sound, and how to use Cubase 7 in a live setting. Cubase can be configured for use in a traditional multi-room studio. In this type of facility, you typically have performers isolated in their own performance spaces and the engineer or producer in another location called the control room. Cubase 7 allows you to set up your facility this way using the control room. The control room allows for a main mix to the engineer and four separate headphone mixes for performers. Now these performers could be in separate locations or in one room, but each with a different mix in their headphones. The control room also allows other important operations like switching speakers, talkback capacity, switching between mono and stereo and surround modes, and selective dimming, known as listening, to help with troubleshooting during mixdown. How many of these features you can use in your studio will depend on the processor power of your CPU and the routing options on your audio interface. Let's begin by enabling the control room in the VST Connections dialog on the Studio tab. Next, we need to configure our connections, which are also called buses. There are five types of connections to choose from. The external input buses are for playback devices like a CD player. Talkback is for a microphone at the mixing board, which the engineer uses to speak to the various performers throughout the studio. Talkback is vital if your performers are in separate rooms. Q sends refers to the individual headphone mixes for your performers. Phones allows you to set up a dedicated headphone mix for the engineer in case your audio interface doesn't have a dedicated headphone jack. And monitors allows you to connect separate speakers to your interface and switch between them from inside Cubase. Here's what a typical control room configuration looks like. The operation manual explains the details of setting up each type of bus step by step. One note, it is important to turn off the normal outputs in the outputs tab so that they don't conflict with the control room output routing. Now it's time to open the control room. The control room mixer allows us to turn the talkback mic on and off, select which studios will hear the talkback signal, change speakers, change the stereo configuration, select what mix is played in the control room, and select what mix is played in each performer's studio. Select who can hear the click track, activate the listen function, and determine how much to turn down the rest of the mix when a track is in listen mode. To activate the performer studios, open the Racks drop-down menu in the Mix console. Select Q Sends. Then turn on and adjust the Q Send level for any tracks the performer wants to hear. Make sure all the tracks have their own studio send turned on. Right click on the Cues button in the Control Room Mixer and set all the studios to Use Current Mix. And you can see this menu also allows you to enable and disable the cue sends. Now you can click and drag to make small adjustments for each track in each studio. Now let's take a moment to look at how Cubase 7 handles surround sound. You record and playback surround, or 5.1 material, in basically the same way as stereo tracks. The only real difference is that you need more inputs and outputs on your interface, and you need to configure your buses for 5.1. Let's create a new bus in VST Connections. This time, for configuration, select 5.1. Now let's add a new audio track, and we'll configure it for 5.1 as well. Now when you record, you'll get five individual recordings packaged as one 5.1 surround track. Of course, your interface must be configured to playback 5.1 signals, and you'll need an appropriate 5.1 surround sound amplifier and speaker setup to really take advantage of this capability. Here's an example of how a 5.1 surround plugin, this is the surround panner. And here's a 5.1 mix and export. Finally, let's take a quick look at ways to use Cubase in a live environment. 
The first question you have to ask yourself is where will I be during the show? On stage or at the front of house? If your desire is to use Cubase to capture a live performance, the fundamental recording process is no different from previously discussed. However, there are a few additional considerations. Do you have an audio interface that can receive enough channels simultaneously to multitrack, or do you need to set up for a stereo-only mix? Will you place your own mics on the performer, or will you take an auxiliary send from the main mixing board, and if so, how clean is that signal? Does your laptop have enough CPU power to record a large number of tracks at once? Consider activating the brick wall limiter across the input bus on each channel to prevent transients or feedback from overloading your system. Put in the time ahead of time to configure templates and presets for the show so that you don't have to hold up the show or miss material while you're frantically adding tracks or routing signals. Preparation is everything. The band rehearses their part, you need to rehearse your part too. Now, if you're going to use Cubase on stage, you have several options. If you're a keyboard player, Cubase can serve as a powerful VST instrument rack. You can create a separate VST instrument track inside Cubase for every song. And of course, you can use Cubase as a drum machine or sequencer to provide rhythm or backing parts just like a traditional hardware sequencer. If you're a guitarist, you can use Cubase as a powerful effects rack using the VST amp rack and a low buffer setting. You can also save different VST amp rack configurations as different songs or different track presets to make switching between them easy. If you're a DJ, then it's time to take a fresh look at Loop Mash 2. Loop Mash was introduced in Cubase version 5 and provided many interesting possibilities, but the new performance controls take it to a whole new level. Loop Mash 2 gives you 24 individual scenes, individual slice playback, edit, and effects more global effects, and the ability to drag and drop slices to and from composite loops, the ability to drag and drop slices to Groove Agent 1, and 20 performance controllers pre-configured to trigger from your master keyboard. Here's an example. Cubase 7 also lets you collaborate with other studios in real time using VST Connect, which is explained in the new features video. Finally, let's move on to our last chapter, where we'll demonstrate how to set up and use remote controls, quick controls, and user panels.